Hello my sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. First sit down video of 2022 and I'm so excited to film this video. I've watched a bunch of other people film this and it just looked so fun so I decided I want to film it too. We're also sitting in my new house. Very exciting. If you guys saw my last video, I told you guys we moved. I showed you guys the moving process. Keep up with my vlogs if you want to see little house updates but I love it. I'm obsessed. But that's not what this video is about. Today I'm going to be reviewing every book that I read in 2021. And I read 80 books. So I'm going to keep my reviews to a minimum. I'm hoping one to two sentences unless I'm extremely passionate about a book maybe. Um, I'm also going to put photos of the book next to me because I didn't own all of them and I don't really want to sit and pull them all out of my bookcase. But I'll try and list them all down below with authors and all of that sort of stuff in case you want to look it up for yourself and purchase it or borrow it or whatever that may be but I'm just so excited to talk about books I've got my book journal here which tells me all of the books that I read I'll try and also put my star ratings on the little picture here as well so you guys know what I thought it's really hard because I feel like the more books I read the more I change my mind about what I would rate previous books so there are books that I look at now I'm like would I give that five stars now maybe not but at the time I did so I'm just gonna give you the star rating that I gave at that time, but I don't know if I stand by all of those ratings anymore. And I think I'm gonna share the books in the order that I read them. So like I'll start with my January reads and you know, head on throughout the year. But if I read a series, maybe I'll try and include that all together and just talk about it as a whole. The first book that I read in 2021 was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I hope I've said that correctly. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I did not like the ending. I feel like there was so much more I wanted to know and it didn't tie itself up in a nice little bow at the end. And I understand that that's not how literary fiction works, but I wish this book specifically had a bit more of a conclusion to it or a bit more of a satisfying conclusion to it, I guess. Then I read The Dry by Jane Harper. I didn't really like this very much. It was boring to me, even though it was a murder mystery. And I feel like when you read like a mystery, you want to be like shocked finding out who the killer is. And the whole thing was just so dull to me. And I don't know how a murder mystery can be bland, but to me, this just was. Then I read Messy Wonderful Us. May I just say, this is probably one of my favorite book covers that I read this year. Like the cover was the prettiest <laughs> that I think I've read this year, but the book itself was so boring. Like it was just not it. Then I read Holy Spirit Here and Now, really enjoyed this. Learning about the Holy Spirit was something that I really wanted to do in 2020 and 2021. And I feel like this book was really helpful for that. So I really enjoyed this. Then I read The Wife Between Us and this was my first five star read of 2021. I loved it. It was like mind boggling. It was kind of confusing. A lot of people read this and message me saying they're confused and they didn't really get it. So it's not something that you can just like breeze through. You need to kind of pay attention to what's happening. But it was one of those books where I was shocked and I love being shocked. Then I read The Silent Patient straight after that and I read it within like 24 hours. The Silent Patient was probably one of my favorite books of 2021. It was just so captivating and again pretty shocking to me. I didn't get to the ending and every single person that I have recommended this book to has loved it. Then I read Then She Was Gone which was my first Lisa Jewell book and I enjoyed it but it was also so sad. Obviously the story is quite sad and so you should expect that but it just left me feeling very low and it was a really good book and a really good story and very interesting but it just didn't feel good afterwards which honestly I think is the point so I think it did well in that respect. Don't go into it looking for like a light-hearted happy read you know. Then I read The Unhoneymooners, my first Christina Lauren book, probably one of my most disappointing reads of 2021. I feel like everyone raves about it and I just did not get it. The ending was absolutely stupid and it really put me off Christina Lauren but We'll get back into that later in the year. Then I read Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And this was a five-star read for me. It's a non-fiction book. It is so little, like it's a really short book. If you're looking for a very succinct non-fiction book that will help you in terms of productivity and habit building, this is the book for you. If you're not into reading, read this book because it's so easy, so quick, but full of incredible tips. The Last Anniversary by Leanne Moriarty. I enjoyed this. It was interesting, but it wasn't a standout to me. Then I read Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. We love C.S. Lewis. This is a reread for me. It's a five-star read. It is so full of wisdom, and I think that I could reread this for the rest of my life and get something new out of it every single time. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I feel like I hear a lot of mixed reviews about this, but I personally really enjoyed it. I thought the characters were super interesting. I thought the story was super interesting. It was very atmospheric 
atmospheric. I think it's definitely worth the read. Another kind of disappointing read for me was The Kiss Quotient, which I know is a very controversial opinion to have because people love this book. But to me, this book really sacrificed in terms of plot so that it could include a lot of smut and that is just not the book for me. I know a lot of people love that and like go for it if that is your thing. But for me, I do not read for smut. I'm not interested in that. I skip past it. It's just not for me. I want to read for love and if you sacrifice your plot so that you can have smut, I just can't get on board with that. So it was not for me, but I know a lot of people love it. Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, another favorite from 2021. So freaking good. I cannot wait to see the movie. This is a Christian fiction book. It was my first Francine Rivers book. I want to read more from her. I have a few more books that I need to pick up this year. It was almost just magical. Like the story just like hit you so deep in your heart that I will never forget about this book. It was beautiful. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Probably my top book of 2021. I'm not gonna lie. So freaking good. This is really what got me to be a TJR stan. I love. I loved it. Like, I know it's like one of the most popular books out there on BookTok, on BookTube or whatever. I don't care about being basic in terms of my opinion. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was truly literally magical. Like it was so freaking good. I could talk about it for hours. I loved it. Then I read the Southern, I'm gonna get the title wrong. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Killing Vampires? Slaying Vampires. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I learned that I don't like reading books about vampires. It was very like guts and gore and not my vibe. I like the start of it. I like the mystery aspect of it, but the whole like actual vampire and like creepy, bleh, it was disgusting, which I think is the point, but it was just not for me. Get a Life, Chloe Brown was a very average read for me and I was expecting to love it. So I was kind of sad that I didn't. I just could not see the chemistry between the two love interests. I don't know why. It was just not it for me. I wish I loved it, but I just didn't. And that's just my honest opinion. The Sun is also a star. This was so good. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did. I feel like having everything set in 24 hours was absolutely incredible and just so much happened. And the ending was a really, realistic ending which i appreciated like it wasn't some fairy tale kind of and they all lived happily after ending but it also wasn't like a stupid ending where you're mad at it it was just like oh that's probably what would have happened in real life if this situation happened in real life so it was really good the woman in the window by aj finn loved this this was so good to me i haven't seen the movie a lot of people hate the movie but the book itself is so good i was shocked by the ending it kept me on my toes i just like could not stop thinking about it every time i put it down so I read it so quickly and I think it's totally worth the read. Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller. Really enjoyed this, obviously being a newlywed in 2021. I thought it touched on some really awesome subjects and really awesome topics. And I think it almost would have been better to read it when you're engaged rather than married. But I also think you could get things out of it at any stage in your relationship. So I think it was good. Then I read Don't Waste Your Life by John Piper. This was a really hard hitting book. It's one of those things that makes you want to just like get your life into check. And I really liked that. It was wasn't revolutionary to me, but it was still very impactful. Then I read The Selection, The Elite, and The One. I'm so mad at my past self that I didn't read this when I was growing up because I think I would have been so obsessed with it if I'd read it like during high school probably. And I still really, really loved it. All of them were a four star read for me and it was just so fun. It had aspects of mystery, but also romance, but also a really great plot. And personally, I just really enjoyed it. It was just like a very innocent, wholesome series. I didn't end up reading the last two because I know that they follow a slightly different storyline and I don't know if I'm really interested in reading that. But the first three were so fun and I definitely recommend them. I understand that they are a little bit for a younger audience, but I'm 23. I've read them when I was 23 and I really, really enjoyed them. Then I read Truly Devious and I thought this was okay, but I didn't love it enough to continue reading the series and maybe I'll get back to it eventually because it was fun, but the ending felt really rushed and really incomplete to me and I understand that when you read a series sometimes the ending feels incomplete because they want to continue it in the rest of the books but there still needs to be a solid ending in my opinion to any book and I feel like this didn't have that and it really frustrated me. Then I read Confess by Colleen Hoover and this was so good. I love Confess. I think it's a little bit underrated. I've heard mixed opinions from people but for me I think it actually might be one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books. It was so good to me and the concept of it was 
Chef's Kiss, Atomic Habits. I feel like this was a huge book in 2021 and it did not disappoint. Way more readable than I originally thought it was gonna be. And if you're someone who hasn't read a lot of nonfiction, I think you would really enjoy this because it's very accessible language. Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Again, I think this might be one of my absolute favorites from 2021. I loved Archer. He was so wholesome and so sweet. My legs are falling asleep. If I was to recommend one romance to you guys, it might have to be Archer's voice. It was so good. I really need to read more from this author because Archer's voice, chef's kiss. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne definitely takes the number one spot of most disappointing read of 2021. <laughs> I know a lot of people love this book. It's like their ride or die, but for me, it was just nope, 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 nope. Couldn't care less about the characters. Couldn't care less about the love interest. Couldn't care less about the storyline. I know it's gonna offend a lot of people, but you gotta say it how it is. Some books are gonna to appeal to some people and they're not gonna to appeal to other people and The Hating Game was just not it for me. Sorry guys. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was so good. I was not expecting this book to be as good as it was and it shocked me. I loved every single word of every single page. It transported me into the world of Daisy Jones and the Six and I will be forever thankful to this book because it was just an experience. I would say. Then of course we have Malibu Rising. I also loved this. I do think that Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones are like a different level to Malibu Rising. It's definitely not bad. It's still a really good book, but it's just not quite as magical as the other two. I love the sibling dynamics. I love the storyline. I love the location. I love the characters. It was really great. I really enjoyed Malibu Rising, but it wasn't quite as on point as Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. The Midnight Library, another kind of disappointing one for me. I feel like it was so hyped up over the internet, but I feel like it wasn't written very well. I feel like it was very predictable and not as inspiring as I wished it was. I feel like the concept, absolutely incredible. The execution, not quite it. Verity by Colleen Hoover, what a freaking roller coaster. Wild, wild. And I still don't know which team I'm on for the ending. <laughs> Tell Us Something True by Dana Reinhart. Very average. <laughs> if you like John Green, you'd probably love it, but I think I was a little bit too old for this book and it just didn't really hit me the way I wanted it to. The Flat Share, again, very average to me. It was definitely fun and I enjoyed it, but it was 100 pages too long and I just don't think I ever really emotionally connected to the characters, which was a bit of a letdown. Girls in the Garden by Lisa Jewell very sad, very dark and depressing. Again, I feel like that's what the intention is. Like that's the vibe that Lisa Jewell is trying to portray. So she did a great job at doing that, but I just don't think those sort of books are my favorite. So great book if you like that kind of vibe, but not for me. The Maidens. After being so obsessed with The Silent Patient by the same author, I really, really wanted to love this and I did love some aspects of it, but overall it was just a bit messy to me or it just felt like the author was trying too hard and The Silent Patient just didn't feel like that at all. So it was a bit sad to me that that's the, the feeling that I got from reading The Maidens, but it was very atmospheric, which I loved, kind of like that dark academia vibe, but there were also a lot of unanswered questions after reading it, so don't know if I love that. The Deal by Elle Kennedy, severe disappointment. It was like just fluff and sometimes that's really good. <laughs> like the Addicted series, love that and that's pretty much just fluff. I just didn't connect to the characters, didn't connect to the storyline. It was okay, but it just wasn't as good as everyone else seemed to make it out to be. Everyone just likes different books, so I'm not mad at that, but it was just a bit like, oh to me. House on the Cerulean Sea, absolutely loved this storyline, but after doing more research into the book, just not a huge fan of how the author went about a lot of things. So I feel like I can't really support it because of that, but the story itself is stunning. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This was one of my favorites, I think. I really loved it. I really loved the characters, loved Miles. Yeah, it was really good. Definitely recommend. Red, White and Royal Blue. I thought it was good, but it wasn't as phenomenal as I was expecting it to be. How However, the discussions on grief were incredible and I loved those parts of the book. And it was also a little bit too long, I feel. Beach Read by Emily Henry. Again, the discussion and the portrayal of grief in this was one of my favorite things, which I don't know how I ended up reading two books back to back that gave me that same kind of feeling. But yeah, I think Emily Henry did a really great job of portraying the idea of grief, which I really appreciated as someone who has been in a similar position. And overall, it was a really good romance and I really liked the characters and I did just enjoy it as a whole 
whole, but it wasn't like a huge standout to me. Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. Loved a lot of parts about this book, but also I think it's my least favorite Coho book that I had read up to this point. Mostly because it just felt like it was aimed at a little bit of a younger audience. So it was a little bit harder for me to relate. And there were little bits that were just extremely cringy and I couldn't move past that. Emotionally healthy spirituality. I enjoyed this, wasn't revolutionary to me. I don't even really remember a lot about it, which is bad <laughs> for a nonfiction book. You want it to be memorable. It was okay. Happiest Man on Earth. One of the best books I read in 2021. So inspiring, so motivating, fills you with so much gratitude for the life that we live. And I could not recommend this book enough. Then I read The Great Gatsby or reread it. I read it in high school and definitely didn't appreciate how great it was at that time, but it was really fun to reread it with a lot more knowledge and understanding and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Life's Too Short. One of the best rom-coms I read this year. I think there were two standout rom-coms for me and this is one of them. I don't usually enjoy rom-coms. I find them a little bit cringy. I prefer romance over rom-coms when it comes to books at least. Yeah, I just find them very cringy, very cheesy, not funny a lot of the time. But this one was funny, but it was also hard hitting and you fell in love with the characters and you loved the storyline. It had a great plot. It was just everything that I ever wanted in a book and I really, really, really love this book. Then I read The Friend Zone by the same author because I thought it would be just as good and it really just didn't hit the same, which I guess is to be expected in some way because it's not the exact same book, but it was just a little bit of a letdown after being so obsessed with Life's Too Short. What? The friend zone was just not for me. Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. She really made a comeback with this one in my rating system. I gave it five stars. I loved it. It was wholesome. It was cute, but it was still fun. I guess this is technically a rom-com, so I guess that makes three rom-coms that I love this year. It was just so good. Like, if you love a wholesome vibe, you need to read this book. And in my opinion, I loved it so much more than The Hating Game. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me so much better than The Hating Game. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. This is so good. It is filled with so, 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 so much knowledge and tips about productivity. It is very dense. So although it's a short book, I feel like it can take you a long time to get through, but I feel like he just knows his stuff and it's one of the best productivity books that I think I've read. Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Really enjoyed this. It wasn't one of my favorites by Coho, but it also wasn't one of my least favorites. It was just kind of somewhere in the middle. Definitely recommend it, but it wasn't like a huge standout to me. The Perfect Family by Robin Harding. I enjoyed this. It was very easy to read. I read it super quickly and I think it is worth the read, but it's nothing super crazy. Crazy Love by Francis Chan. This is the third time I've read this book and I absolutely loved it. Of course, so obsessed. This is a Christian nonfiction if you're not aware, but I definitely recommend it if you're looking to take your faith more seriously and you just need a bit of a reset in terms of your faith and just like a reminder of why you're doing what you're doing. Then I started the Addicted series. So I kind of read it a little bit more spread out throughout the rest of the year, but I'll talk about the whole series now. I haven't finished the series yet. I'm like slowly getting through it. I kind of have enjoyed spreading it out and almost using it as a palette cleanser between certain books, but I read Addicted to You, loved it. Ricochet was almost just like, it felt like it was an in-between book that just kind of needed to be there to like fill in the gaps of the other books, if that makes sense. Like they just needed to fill in that time and like, and like explained what happened before you like actually got back into the storyline. Addicted for Now, which is the third book, is probably my favorite one so far. And then Kiss the Sky was really fun. It was interesting getting someone else's like story because that one is about Connor and Rose, but it wasn't as good as Addicted for Now in my opinion. And now I'm currently reading Hot House Flower, so I'll obviously keep you updated with what I'm reading this year in future videos. But as a whole, I love the series. I love the characters. It is so <laughs> fluffy and so not plot driven. Like it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't actually know why I love this so much apart from that I feel like the characters are my friends. And I feel like when I'm lonely, those are the books that I want to read. So it has just kind of filled a bit of a hole inside of me, I guess this series and just having those people to like turn to. So I know that sounds so cliche and so stupid, but I think a lot of people treat this series in that way and I think it's why it's such a huge favorite for a lot of people is because you just fall in love with the characters and you just feel like you're a part of their world and a part of their family so I definitely recommend it but there's a lot of smart which I just skip over personally it's just not my thing but 
just to be aware of. Normal People by Sally Rooney. My first Sally Rooney. I need to read more of her this year because I loved Normal People and I was really not sure how I would feel about it. I don't even know how to describe it because it is so unique from anything else I've ever read. It wasn't like super plot driven and the characters were so complex. I don't even know how to begin describing it. And you got to the end and you were just like, oh my gosh, like, that was an experience, I guess. Then I read Unf Your Brain. This was a recommendation to me by my brother and I liked it, but I didn't love it. I didn't think it was as revolutionary as I thought it would be. Maybe that's because I've read a lot of psychology books and I've studied psychology at university. So some of the points just weren't as yeah, revolutionary to me as it would be to someone who hasn't read a lot of those books before. But it also uses a lot of like very everyday language rather than formal language but to the point where it became distracting to me rather than helpful but I think that's just a personal preference thing. The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I didn't enjoy this as much as I wanted to. It was such a slow burn and it was just kind of frustrating at times but the little bits of romance that you actually did get were so good. I just wish there was more of it and I know that there's more in this series and maybe I should read those and maybe it would be better but I just haven't picked them up at this point. The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. I feel like I've liked other books by this author more so it definitely wouldn't be one of the first ones that I would recommend to people. Heartburns by Colleen Hoover. I loved this. I gave it five stars. I think it's one of my favorite Coho novels. I couldn't even tell you exactly why. I think I really love it when you see two broken people, which I don't know if that's bad to say, but both of the characters in this were so broken, but they like found this just contentment and love for each other and it was so beautiful to read. So I think I just, I just loved it. They Both Die in the End by Adam Silvera. Um, I didn't love it. It was a little bit underwhelming to me. I feel like there was so much hype about it. The concept was really cool, but it just felt a little bit messy to me, I think. I feel like people like it for the concept, not because of the actual book. Do you know what I mean? Then I read Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World. Loved this. If you like The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry or To Hell with the Hustle, I think you would really enjoy this book. So definitely recommend. Losing Hope by Colleen Hoover. I actually liked this more than Hopeless, which is funny because Hopeless and Losing Hope are kind of the same story, but from two different perspectives. But I think I enjoyed Holder's perspective more. And then I read Finding Cinderella, which kind of like follows those two books by Coho. And I thought it was really good and really fun, but it was like too short of a book to really have a lot of feelings about it, if that makes sense. I feel like it was very rushed, but I also understand that it was a novella, so that's kind of to be expected. Then I read The Throne, The Lamb, and The Dragon by Paul Spillsbury. It's all about the book in the Bible of Revelation. I feel like I don't have a lot of knowledge about that book, so I wanted to understand it better. And I thought this book was really helpful, but since it's the first book that I've read on that subject, I don't feel like I have a lot to say about it because I haven't been able to compare that with any other research or like knowledge if that makes sense so I don't really know where I stand about like which opinions I hold about the beliefs and the theories that people have about revelation so TBC. Then I read Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino and I freaking loved this. I think if you've read Love and Other Words, you need to read Swear on This Life because it's a similar kind of vibe in terms of childhood best friends to lovers and then like that loss of connection and then what happens after. I don't want to spoil the ending or anything. I read it very quickly. It's a short book and I don't understand why it doesn't have more hype. I don't understand why people aren't talking about it more, especially because so many people love and are obsessed with Love and Other Words by Christina Lawrence. In. If you like that book, you need to read Swear on This Life. Then I read The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, another super phenomenal read. I think it's so interesting. Such a cool perspective on the subject. It's all like letters that a demon has written to another demon as a mentor. It's very kind of complicated to explain, but very interesting and very good for self-reflection, I think. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue the off-campus series after not loving the deal, but I really enjoyed the mistake a lot more than I enjoyed the deal, so I might continue the series because we'll see which ones I like and which ones I don't. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like the mistake but yeah I thought it was way better. Then I read The Inheritance Games and The Hawthorne Legacy and oh my goodness some of my favorite books from 2021. Thank you Hayley Pham for convincing me to read these because they were phenomenal, freaking loved them. Cannot wait for the third book to come out this year. I'm gonna be so sad when the series is over. And for those of you who are asking who my favorite brother is, I actually don't know. But if I was only gonna recommend one book from this video, it might be The Inheritance Games. Oh, and Evelyn Hugo, probably. I also read The Love Hypothesis, which has been so big over BookTok and BookTube this year. And I thought it was really fun. And it was my third rom-com that I loved 
from the year. So if you guys are on the fence about reading The Love Hypothesis, I definitely recommend it for the three of you who haven't read it yet because I feel like everyone has by now. It's so good. Then I read November 9 by Colleen Hoover. This is my first coho that I reread. I actually read this one in 2020, but I reread it in November this year because it felt very fitting and it was just a great solid coho. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's definitely a really good one. Then I read Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren and I feel like she really, well, they, because it's two people, two authors, they really redeemed themselves with this one. After reading The Unhoneymooners, I really didn't think that I would read Love and Other Words because I was like, oh, if it's anything like The Unhoneymooners, I don't want it. But Love and Other Words was just completely different and so much better, so much better than The Unhoneymooners. And yeah, definitely probably top 10 of this year. Then I read Enjoying God by Tim Chester. I definitely recommend this if you just want to learn more about enjoying your relationship with God rather than like all the things you think you should be doing and like how to be a better Christian and like blah blah blah. blah. If you just want to learn how to enjoy God and enjoy your relationship with him, this is the book for you. Then I read All Your Perfects by Coho. This was really good. It was so sad and it took me a while to get through because it was just so sad the whole way through, but I still really recommend it because it was very hard hitting and it was like you were in the room with those characters dealing with what they were dealing with, obviously you're not, but it just felt like you could feel their emotions, which was so powerful. And then I read Finding Perfect, which is a novella by Colleen Hoover. And it's super cool because it actually ties together the Hopeless series as well as All Your Perfects. So you have to read the Hopeless series and All Your Perfects before you read Finding Perfect. Otherwise it just won't make sense or it won't be as impactful as it could be. But it was honestly the perfect novella to me. Like it was just so, so, so good. And it was exactly what I needed to just kind of tie up that little world of Colleen Hoover. And then the last two books that I read for 2021 were A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. And I've heard so much hype about these books and I really, really enjoyed them. I haven't read the third one yet, but I'm hoping I will sometime this year. I think if you like the Inheritance Games, you'd probably also like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because it just has that mystery, but also those friendship elements. And I feel like you really connect to those characters. I don't think it was like the best book I've ever written. It wasn't a five star for me, which it was for a lot of other people but I have really enjoyed those books so far. But those are the 80 books that I read in 2021. I would love to hear what your favorite book of the year was. So leave a comment down below telling me your favorite book of 2021 and maybe even a book that you're really excited to read in 2022. I'd love to hear what is on your TBRs for the new year. I'm so excited for this new year and I can't wait to make more book videos for you guys. If you have any suggestions, also let me know if you want to see anything in particular. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming along this book journey with me and falling in love with books with me it's so fun to do this with you guys and i guess i'll see you in my next video very soon good bye